our mind is like kind of wandering all the time in different directions. So this idea of Shine is just to bring, like, so putting a needle in the thread. Staying there, staying right, staying there. So expanding that moment of putting a needle in the, has a thread in the needle longer, like anywhere from half an hour to uh, hour, two hour like that. So it's able to stay very long. Does that make sense? So once you continue to do that, then what happened is that mind is able to rest naturally more naturally by itself rather than this strong sense of, of focus or force. So the force becomes naturally less and less as you become familiar with the practice. Your body, the energetically, your mind, it becomes less effort, but it rests itself more, but it does not lose its level of focus. Does it make sense? So in the teachings, it talks about, like not in the Shanghai Yuji, but in the Ati, it talks about like the um, external and the internal signs of like a Shine practice, uh, such as uh, feeling um, like internal signs, so like a feeling vulnerable, a feeling a little bit fearful, like they say, uh, like a bird, bird, uh, a baby bird in the winter snowstorms, like shivering, and uh, um, fish. Another experience is like a fish swimming in the ocean, a bird flying in the sky, uh, some sense of uh, uh, freedom, the opposite experience of being stuck in a traffic. Uh, probably. Uh, every now and then we feel like we are stuck in a traffic of the life. We don't know which direction to go, congested, too many things, unclear. So it's not like that, there's the opposite experience of flying in the sky, bird flying in the sky, a fish swimming in the ocean, a uh, sense of vulnerable, and also um, uh, like a uh, is a feeling of uh, restless also sometimes, feeling of like a jumping, uh, crying or laughing, uh, kind of little signs of craziness. <laughs> uh, so these are like, just something is changing. When something is changing inside, this is what's happening. It's and then slowly, I think even, even sometimes more, more like when you are experiencing the nature of mind, that inner mindfulness and stability a little bit more. I think it's in a way like um, going from uh, bad relationship to the good relationship, change from bad relationship to the good relationship, change from dependence, dependence, painful, conflicting relationship to the more clear, open, connected relationship is just this sh changing that. We're changing that even though you're going toward the good one, but still it's a little bit harder to, to give up uh, some familiar familiarities and uh, dependency and things like that. So it's some sense of like, most of the time, we do not have very good relationship. That, I mean, cannot have, and, and ultimately speaking, cannot have really a good relationship with the ego. You can have a better one than worse one, but cannot be perfect. There's no, there's no perfect relationship to the ego because ego is not perfect. So if some someone is not perfect, you cannot have perfect relationship. So that this is so that relationship so strong consistence, years of habit of that relationship, you're trying to change it, or, or maybe not trying to change it. it, when you begin to lose it, it's a little bit scary, disorienting. And every now and then exciting. 
feeling like a jumping, laughing. But then every now and then it's a little scary, vulnerable. So you go back and forth. So in between the shine and mindfulness practices, like it's going through that divorce. No, the divorce may be separation. You know. But going through that separation, you know. Because you are that. So you can imagine the level of intensity relationship that you have with your ego and your pain. Of course, when you say, as for some people, relationship is very much with the pain because ego is almost like a full-blown pain. And for others, the ego is maybe, it, it, it's a smart ego, it's able to cover the pain, it's able to display some false joy and laughter, like a professional smiles. And so those kind of things, just able to cover for a moment to moment, but then in the end of the day, when you come back home, you cry in the house. So. <laughs> All the tears that you hold in front of the other people, you come back home and you, you let it go by yourself, no one around you, in front of the empty walls. So that's what we, we you know, like most of the time people do. So those, those so this kind of, kind of going through that, that moment, I think the practice is going into the nature of mind is kind of going through that moment. So it's, when you're more into that kind of uh, um, ego and pain, you feel more struggle, challenges with the practice. When you're more in that transition, you feel like these kind of vulnerable and kind of joyful, exciting experiences. When you're more into settling down, you feel like more free, like a bird flying in the sky and ocean, I say. Yeah, sky and there's uh, this fish swimming in the ocean. You feel like a sense of more like freedom. Like that, when this, the separation is more clear, you feel like more like a freedom and restful. And it's also like a, a sense of feeling okay to rest, right? This is interesting. Like a, we all have, you know, like a our old self and new self. Uh, we all, like, uh, when you look back 10, 15 years ago, who you were, maybe, you know, some of things maybe you don't like, right? You know, some of things, what you did, what you said, where you thought about things, you look at your bo that body, you look at that speech, you look at that mind, you say, oh my God. <laughs> Kind of shame. But that's okay. That's okay. So, and, and so sometimes we don't uh, forgive that. We don't forgive to that person. We don't accept that situation. So it's important to learn to kind of forgive. forgive. If you're not forgiving, it's important to learn to forgive because you, do, you don't want to live you know, you are not able to live with your present sense of self because you are living with the old sense of self, which is no longer even there. So it's, it's like a, not living with what you have and trying to live with what you don't have. That's the way of, best way of creating pain. Same way sometimes we judge other people also. We say, I hate that person. When was your last time you talked? Oh, that was 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> 25 years ago, something happened, you still hate that person? Who is that person? Is that the person who lives in Florida now? <laughs> or that is the person who was used to live in Hawaii? You know, you, you, you look, you're looking at the same person you're holding the same person's image. You're holding the same story in your mind. So much has changed the last 25 years. World is no longer the same. No people is no longer the same. Every cell in your body is no longer the same. But the pain that you're holding is the same pain over the year. It's gained some interest too. <laughs> and it's stronger than even before. 
if you learn skillful learning a more way of creating conflict, you know. So you're holding the same, it just doesn't make sense. You have to understand that person is no longer the same person anymore. Not at all. So the same way <clears throat> yourself also, the sum of things that you don't forgive yourself, you don't think about your, the way you look at yourself, some things happened in the past, it's no longer the same. So in a way, it's not really important that much. If it, it is important, if it does create conflict, if it does create pain, then you have to learn to create, uh, how you say, so-called whole purification practices. You have to do all those things. You, you have to go to therapies and so you have to do all those things. But if it's no longer an issue, you clearly see the separation. You say, no, it's no longer the same person. Why I bother about it? Doing it? <coughs> then there's no reason. Clearly, if that is true, if one is able to see that way and realize that way, then there's no issue to do a lot, lot of work of the past. You don't do a lot of work, spending, a lot of, spending too much time on working the past self. Rather, you're trying to be aware of the present self. And that's exactly what Dzogchen practice is. Do not worry about the past so much. It's to take care of the present. Because you don't have so much time to take, you know, worrying about the past and worrying about the future, and then you have not, no time left to take care of the present. You know? <laughs> The past which is gone, you're worrying about it. Future did not come, you're worrying about it. Present which exists, you don't have time. So that's the life many people live. And that's the life we don't want to live. So that's this transition of the practice is a little bit that's all that that's what is happening, you know? Does that make sense? <clears throat> 